Hello guys, welcome back to Pitet Chemistry Channel. So if you are wondering uh, why I had to redo this video, um, usually I don't do corrections on my video uh, apart from adding onto the video descriptions or video details. But since this is a topical MCQ and I found out that you know it's quite a, a serious mistake and it hasn't been watched that many times, so I thought it would be worthy for me to just uh, redo this part of the uh, tutorial, uh, which I actually got wrong, got it wrong, and uh, one of the viewer, one of the one of your fellow viewer and subscriber actually informed me that uh, um, um, I got my explanation for this question wrong as the a marking scheme so uh, I will be the first one to actually come forward and apologize for getting it wrong and I'll try and get it right this time okay so uh, welcome to P Tech chemistry channel so this is a series of topical MCQs uh, it's a five question series uh, topical MCQs are really good for revising your NS concepts and MCQ are particularly good to have a uh, uh, to test how good and how strong your understanding of the concepts are because the other options sometimes can be very confusing they are either one testing your logic uh, and two they're also testing your mental strength on like uh, really really carefully reading all the options and making sure that you got the best option that actually relates to what they want you to do okay so let me get started on this question that actually caused me problem um, so we have a slow stream of water from a tap and we can see that the stream of water actually gets deflected It gets deflected. It doesn't flow straight. It gets attracted towards the negatively charged rod And there's a result of the polar water molecule So we say water molecule is polar and molecular polarity is a result of uh, one the shape of the molecule uh, which in the case of water it's got two bonding pair this is a sigma and a sigma so it's got two sigma bonds therefore it's called two bond pairs and you also have two lone pair on the oxygen oxygen is a group 16 element it's got six valence electron it has used one and two to be shared with each of the hydrogen it still has four more left on the oxygen in the valence shell so four electrons in the valence shell there's two lone pairs and you know the lone pair lone pair repel more than lone pair bond pair which repel more than bond pair bond pair this will have been covered in any cambridge and those textbook as well as your lesson notes when you first did shape of molecule very very important shape of molecule for h2o with two bond pair and two lone pair is just bent um, book will sometimes say v-shape or non-linear i'm just used to using bent they all mean the same thing as long as you get the bond angle correct v-shape bent non-linear all right so the question is why is a water molecule polar so we know water is able to dissociate into ions that is actually correct in all level or IGCSE chemistry you know that when you have aqueous solution of a uh, ionic salt you know that you will have H plus and OH minus that you then have to compare with the other cation and the other anion and then this is a result of the water dissociating to H plus and OH minus you will have learned that in all or IGCSE uh, chemistry this is something you will learn more in A2 ionic equilibrium uh, as part of something called KW, it's called water dissociation constant, water dissociating to H plus and OH minus. It's an equilibrium. You will learn more about equilibrium and equilibrium constant in a later topic called chemical equilibria. Okay, so that is a correct statement, but it does not explain why water molecule is polar. This is a reversible equilibrium, and you know that from IGCSD and all level, that means there aren't a lot of these, and it's not going to explain why they deflect like that. So that's not the best choices the molecules are bonded together by hydrogen bond so there's obviously a correct statement and you should be able to draw molecules of water like this with a delta minus and delta plus dipoles lone pair and label okay so I will show this from the delta plus hydrogen hydrogen bond with another oxygen which has a lone pair and is highly electron negative so that is the dipole and there's a dipole here as well so delta plus attract delta minus you have a hydrogen bonded to a highly electronegative element which is oxygen here and i'm showing the lone pair because it's the from the lone pair of the electronegative element to the hydrogen that's bonded to the other electronegative element and you can label that as hydrogen bond this is a common exercise in as and they also ask you to be able to do this in any a2 paper as well so that is a result of hydrogen bond that causes um, 
the high boiling point of water and there is not a reason for why the water molecule is polar. As I mentioned, the polarity of a molecule depends on the shape as well as depends on the dipoles and dipoles is a result of different electronegativity and when you have atoms of different electronegativity, you have to question do they get cancelled out or do they not get cancelled out? So here, they get pulled in this direction by the electronegative oxygen compared to the hydrogen. They get pulled in this direction. They have direction, so they are in opposite direction, but uh, they are not exactly cancelling each other out because they are not like this. Okay, They are not linear, so they do not cancel out like this. Instead, they do not cancel out here. They have equal magnitude, but not in the totally opposite direction, so there is an angle there. If you do maths, you will know that these things don't cancel out because it's at an angle and not horizontally. Okay, so uh, between B and C, I think my wrong option was choosing C because even though it has two long pair of electrons, you will find that in other cases uh, where you have two long pair of electrons, you can get uh, overall non uh, polarity as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, in terms of molecular polarity, this one, different electronegativity, that will give you different dipole, different dipoles, and then obviously the shape of molecule that result from all of these would mean that the dipoles do not cancel out and therefore B is the best option there. Alright, so from this point onwards, uh, the next question will be actually uh, snippets from the previous uh, video that was uh, made. So um, yeah, thank you whoever actually corrected me on my mistake and I hope this will help uh, uh, future viewers as well. Alright, okay? Alright, um, so we were just talking about bond polarity and molecular polarity and you can tell that it's actually a very common uh, kind of question. All right, so I'm going to draw this as tetrahedral to try and avoid you thinking that, you know, they are square planar and they will cancel each other out. No, they don't. They are 109 degree. And I should draw the three-dimensional diagram properly. So in a tetrahedral geometry, you actually can get a symmetrical distribution of charge if and only if the four different substituents the four substituents bonded to the carbon are exactly the same. Okay, are exactly the same. So I've just drawn all of these so that you could see what's going on. Okay, for this last one, I'm not going to draw the three dimensional because they are two carbon center. But I hope you can see that the difference between drawing a diagram like this and this is that you see the three dimensional geometry being tetrahedral and you can see it's 109 degree. Here is also 109 degree, but I've chosen not to show it because it gets tedious to draw for each and every one of them. This is also 109 degree. Both of these are what you call carbon sp3 hybridized. If you have done hybridization in school but you still don't really understand it, you can check out my short tutorial videos under chemical structure and bonding playlist. Okay, uh, it's on the A level concept playlist. Um, Inside there, you can find me talking a little bit and explaining uh, how and um, how can you get the hybridization happening and how to account for it yeah, in, in any examples uh, in air level. Okay, so which one of the following has no permanent dipole? This is an important compound in AS organic chemistry and this is a polar molecule. Okay, typically we would associate this bit as the non-polar region. These are the hydrocarbon region, as you have uh, known from all level. Uh, oils, you know, petroleum, they are hydrocarbon based and petroleum do not mix with water. Oil do not mix with water. They are non-polar, okay? But this bit is polar. So this is the bond that makes it polar and they are not cancelled out by this non-polar region. So this molecule is very polar, okay? So it has a permanent dipole because of this polar bond, doesn't cancel out by uh, doesn't get cancelled by this non-polar hydrocarbon. Okay, so in terms of these two molecules, these are tetrahedral geometry. If I show you, if you have CF4 and CCL4, both of these are non-polar. They are non-polar because you have four groups. They are the same. 
you either have the four fluorine groups that are the same in the tetrahedral geometry even though the bond is polar the whole molecule is non-polar because the get cancel out the dipole get cancel out there's no permanent dipole as a result of symmetrical distribution of charge in the tetrahedral geometry you see these four are the same again they are non-polar but then you take out one of the chlorine and become chcl3 and they become not all of them are the same therefore you get a non-symmetrical distribution of charges that means the dipoles do not get cancel out these are polar the same deal with this this is also polar molecule because not all four of them are the same they get confusing because you see a lot of students would draw things like this and then they say oh this cancel that that cancel that and that is entirely wrong okay why is that one wrong? Because you have thought that they cancel out in a square planar geometry. You, you have thought that they are 90 degree and 90 degree. And that is actually incorrect thinking. Yeah? It's actually tetrahedral in three dimension. It's not 90 degree as you have shown there. All right? The only one that get cancelled out is actually here. Okay, Each carbon there is actually 120 degree. Because there is a carbon sp2 hybridization geometry. So that cancel out with that 180 degree because these are both chlorine. Okay, this and this cancel out. So I better use a different color so that you can see what get cancelled out and what not. Yeah. So that cancel with that. Both groups are the same. They are in opposite direction, 180 degree to each other. This is a non-polar molecule because the dipoles get cancelled out. So there is no permanent dipole. All right. So 3A part 3 is a question on shape of molecule. This is called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. You see this is what I meant by um, how they like to confuse you by giving you something that looks like 90 when you should realize that nitrogen is a group 15 element. It has five outermost shell electrons. Just because they don't show you does not mean that you shouldn't be putting it in, yeah, in your head as well. So each nitrogen here, one, two, three sigma bond. So three sigma bond will mean three bond pair, but one lone pair on each nitrogen. That will give you 107 degree because it's a trigonal pyramidal. Just like NH3, which is your case study. All right. So there is not 90 degree. Immediately I can tell the 90 degree is wrong. So for NH2, I'm looking for 107 degree. And I'm looking for trigonal pyramidal for both of them, all right, because of that, all right. This is called VSEPR, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, where we say that lone pair, lone pair of electron repel more than lone pair, bond pair, repel more than bond pair, bond pair. So make sure you check out my short tutorial videos under A level concepts VSEPR part one and part two if you still are unaware of what you need to know for VSEPR it's very essential yeah okay in structure and bonding part four which of them has a simple molecular lattice so you can have a giant molecular lattice you can have a giant metallic lattice you can have a giant ionic lattice but you can also have a simple molecular lattice all right so this is mg2 plus o2 minus that is a giant ionic lattice all right this is just sodium it consists is a metal so it consists of your metal cations suspended in a sea of delocalized valence electron so that is a giant structure it's a giant metallic lattice structure okay sio2 is your component of sane is your giant molecular structure okay which you have learned in all level all right sulfur if you go to periodicity there is another topic in topic nine you will learn eventually that sulfur exists as this thing called allotrop you have learned about graphite versus diamond there are different form of the same element right this is the allotrop this is an allotrop of sulfur and is stable as such therefore this is the adopted molecular formula which are defined in topic one as the actual number of atoms present in one single molecule of the compound okay so s8 is simple molecular um i remember back then when i was doing my all level we would have done this structure 
of sulfur. It looks like a W. It's sulfur, 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 sulfur. 8 times sulfur, S8. Okay? Each sulfur is bonded to two other atoms. All right? But that was what I did long, long time ago, even when I was in O level or GCSE level. Okay? Okay. This is the last question in this uh, short tutorial video, so five questions. So it says chloroethene is the monomer of PVC. So PVC is polyvinyl chlorine. And I believe you have done this in all level polymerization topic under addition polymerization. Okay. So what you have is you have that. And when it gets polymerized, in addition polymerization, you do not kick out any small molecule. That would be condensation polymerization, as you have done it in all level. So that's why each carbon still form four bond, extended chain, extended chain, but no more carbon carbon double bond. Okay. So we are talking about each of these carbon being sp2 hybrid because one, two, three bonding pair on this carbon, and therefore no lone pair because it uses one, two, three, four for bonding. So it's a trigonal planar, 120 degree. Again, you can tell again and again that VSEPR are very important there. So 120 degree there. This is not 90 degree. This is 109 degree because each carbon has four bond pair, zero lone pair, one bond pair, two bond pair, three bond pair, four bond pair. Uses all the four outer shell electrons for bonding, no lone pair. VSEPR says when you have four bond pair and no lone pair, the bond pair bond pair repel equally and therefore you get a tetrahedral geometry. In a tetrahedral geometry, you will get 109 degree and 109 degree part in three dimension, not in just in two dimension. In three dimension, 109 degree is bigger than 90 degree. So you get to push apart furthermore to minimize repulsion, okay? VSEPR, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So what is true about the CC bond in the polymer, along the polymer, they are all 109 degree, that's correct, because they are all carbon sp3 hybridization. None of them are 120 degree because you have added across a double bond. Same deal with that, they are all incorrect. They are not 180 degree. <laughs> Because some people, students always draw this, okay, they know how to draw this, and then they say, based on my diagram, it looks like that. Yeah, but your diagram hasn't taken into account VSEPR, which you will have started learning in A level, okay? That's why it's called advanced level chemistry. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So, um, if you like my teaching style and my explanations, if you enjoyed these videos, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share with your uh, friends uh, and your um, wide network of uh, social contacts. Um, probably have more than me, actually. So, so, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.